Apparently I'm known as a birth ninja in my community because I can get really great birth images without being seen or heard. So I'm going to share six tips to get fantastic birth images without being noticed. photography. Hey y'all, my name is Tavia and I am the owner of The Beauty and Birth where I train birth photographers how to run successful businesses. Make sure you click subscribe and that little bell next to the subscribe button because I release a new video each and every week that's going to help you grow your birth photography business. When my clients see their images, oftentimes they say things like, wow, how did you even get that? I didn't even know you came in or where were you when you got that shot? Or how did you get that shot? I didn't even know that happened. And it is my number one goal not to disturb mom's birth space while still getting fantastic photos. In fact, one of my clients even made me a shirt that says hashtag birth ninja, it's epic. It's so much easier to get real raw emotion in birth images if the family forgets that you're even there. That's why this is so important because emotion is why they wanna hire a birth photographer. So if you can get these types of images without disturbing mom's birth space, the word will spread about your awesomeness and you'll get hired even more often. Also, providers are a lot more likely to recommend you if you you stay out of the way while still getting amazing shots. Of course, their first priority is the well being and the happiness of their client. So, if you want to nurture those relationships, this is how you do that. The first way to get amazing birth images without being seen or heard is to find out beforehand what the family is comfortable with and what types of images they want. So, during that first consultation, ask them questions about who is going to be in the delivery room with them and what types of shots are important to them. So so something I usually say in that consultation is I usually stand by mom's head while baby is coming out and capture emotion in the room. Is that what you're looking for? Setting that expectation before labor is really, really important. If you know beforehand what they're expecting and what types of images are important to them, you're going to be able to photograph those moments without having to talk to them during labor and without interrupting anything happening. The second way to get amazing images without being seen or heard is understanding birth. You have to understand birth and what to expect during labor, what's normal, what's not normal. Those things are so important, having a really good understanding of birth. So what does that look like? That might look like not talking during a contraction or a difficult moment of labor and knowing when to stop shooting if something is not right. And even understanding what is routine at certain hospitals. Does a nurse push with mom before the doctor comes in? Do they normally raise the bed really, really high up so that the doctor can stand and catch the baby? Do they leave the baby on mom for skin to skin for a little bit or do they immediately take the baby away? Do they take the baby to the nursery or does the baby stay in their room with the mom? Knowing those things ahead of time will allow you to anticipate what's coming next so that you can capture all those moments without disturbing mom. If you've never given birth yourself and you've never photographed a birth, you're brand new to birth photography, I highly recommend taking a birth class just like a pregnant woman would take just so that you can understand how some hospitals do things and what to expect during labor and birth. Okay, if you dream of being a full-time birth photographer or if you're already a full-time birth photographer, I want you to type birth ninja in the comments. Okay, so my third tip to getting amazing images without being seen or heard is to use a long lens when you first arrive. What is a long lens? A long lens just means a zoom lens. So something like 50 millimeters, 85 millimeters or longer. By using a long lens when you first arrive, it allows you to sort of hang back and not get super close in mom's birth space while still getting up close and personal images. So when I first arrive, I usually have that longer lens on so that everybody gets used to my presence before I get too close. Tip number Number four is don't talk to mom unless she talks to you. Don't ask her questions because you've already had a consultation with her. You already know what types of images she wants and what she's expecting from you. So really there's no reason to ask her questions, right? You already know her answers and obviously you're not posing her. You're not telling her to lay a certain way or do a certain thing. This is birth. It's documentary. So because you already know what she wants when you come in, really there's no reason for you to talk to mom unless she talks to you. If she starts talking to you, obviously engage in conversation conversation with her, but I want that conversation to be initiated by mom, not by me. The fifth tip is to sit through a few contractions right after you arrive and don't do much of anything. I want to be really respectful of her space. So whenever I walk in, I don't start shooting immediately. I walk in and I sit down and I find a spot and I feel out the vibe in the room before I start snapping photos. That's a way to understand what is happening in the birth space so that you're being really, really respectful. So walk into the birth space, 
space, set your stuff down and sit down and be quiet and feel out the vibe in the room and then slowly start getting your stuff out to take photos. Remember, you're walking into a birth. You're not walking into a portrait session. You're not walking into a wedding. You're walking into a sacred moment. So that's why it's so important to walk in and not say much, sit down and observe before you do anything else. The sixth tip, is all about siblings. So when the siblings come in to meet the baby for the first time, I don't want that to be the first time they've ever met you because you're a stranger, they're in a strange place, likely a hospital, you have a big giant camera and they might feel intimidated or scared and you want that moment to be really special when they meet their sibling for the first time. So I encourage my clients to bring their kids to at least one consultation. If not, at least introduce me and make sure they know I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna have a big camera and I'm just there to take pictures of them because the last Last thing I want is the sibling photos to just be of the sibling staring at me or scared of me. I want them to be able to enjoy meeting their sibling for the first time. If they come to the consultation, make sure you interact with them and remind them that you're gonna be there when their baby brother or sister is born and you're gonna have a big camera and it's gonna be so, so exciting and you can't wait to see them again. Make sure and click that like button if you liked this video and the subscribe button because I release a new video every single Friday that's gonna help you grow your birth photography business. And remember, if you love birth photography, there's a reason you love birth photography. You were meant to be a birth photographer. So get out there and make it happen. Have a great week.